I'm waiting for the word. Go. Oh. Action. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, Miss Lee. I'm sorry I can't see you here because I need these to see here. So I will check on you. Good morning, outside people. From Psalm 118, it says, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our service this morning. We know Mary is away, and later on we'll be hearing from Leslie Turley. We're so glad she's with us today. Thank you. Are there any announcements that someone would like to bring to our attention? Guess not. I know our prayer concerns. We continue to pray for Judy and Suzanne and Catherine, and of course all those that are affected by the storms and the fires that are ravaging our country right now. But um, I do have an update from Judy. I'm one of the only people who are not on Facebook. So Bob had to send this to me in an email, but I, in case you have not heard it, I would like to share it with you. This is from Judy. She did this herself. Hello, everyone. I want to give you an update on my progress in rehabilitation. Sometimes when I get frustrated, I need to remember everything that is already behind me. I no longer need kidney dialysis. I no longer need the gallbladder drain. I no longer need the feeding tube. I no longer need speech therapy, which allowed me to pass the swallow test to start eating regular food. I still have no memory of what happened to me for two months. I try to amuse myself at times by singing some of the familiar hymns I grew up singing in church. The words to many hymns are escaping me, which has been upsetting. But the good news is God planted the word stand in my memory. I believe to let me know that he is listening to my prayers. Standing is very much the focus of my physical therapy right now, and it is very challenging. Here are some of the lyrics I've been able to recall. From higher ground, I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on Canaan's tableland, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. And from standing on the promises, Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. And of course the refrain, standing, standing, standing on the promises. I have a wonderful team of therapists who are very vested in my progress. When I went into the therapy room yesterday, they had some motivational messages on the wall opposite the standing bar. She added some pics to the post, which I don't have with me. Some of you have sent me messages via Messenger app. Unfortunately, I am not able to read or respond to them because I don't have the current software version and I am unable to, da unable to download it. I hope you are all well and enjoying the cooler weather. Thank you again for all your prayers and concerns, Judy. She has come such a long way and we do want to remember to continue to lift her up. So let's pray. Almighty God, we praise you for your goodness, your wisdom and mercy, and confess that we often put our trust in our own wisdom and strength. Help us to know you better, to trust in you alone, to look for you, to you for every good thing, humbly and patiently, and to love and honor Help us to love and honor you in all we say and do. Be with those we've mentioned above and strengthen them and any others who may be in our hearts and minds this morning. You have told us in your word that when your people humble themselves and pray, you will forgive our sins and heal our land. We do ask humbly right now, Lord, that you work in our troubled country, world, or maybe even in our own families. Help us pray more deeply for unity within. Now we ask that you be with Leslie as she shares with us today about her service to you. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word, and may we always remember to give you the praise and glory. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Amen. 
And now, here's Leslie. She'll tell us all about herself and her work for the Lord. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm going to do the thing that everybody does now <laughs> and do a wipe down. Uh, we're all kind of used to this now, aren't we? And I'll put my hand sanitizer to the side so I can have easy access in case I need it. So, good morning. It is so good to be back here with you again. David, my husband, Joanna, and I, my daughter Joanna, and I love Parksburg Baptist Church. We started attending here when we first moved to Pennsylvania almost five years ago, and we were here for about two years until David accepted a call to serve at First Baptist uh, Church in Reading. Um, but we still love all of you and keep in touch with all of you, and of course we um, are just so thankful for the ministry that you do. So part of the reason I feel a connection with all of you is because of our common roots within the American Baptist churches and also because of your support of I Am Missionaries. As I look at the board in the back of the church, thank you, my picture is up there as well, um, I just see how much love you have for missions and you pray for our missionaries, you support our missionaries, and um, I'm so thankful for that common bond that we have. My work at International Ministries is as an area director. And as an area director, I serve in 10 countries from Bangladesh all the way over to Malaysia, Indonesia, and then up to Japan, up to the Philippines and Japan. Um, and I'm so thankful for that work. I'm thankful that I am able to be God's hands and feet in a small way in those areas. So for those of you who may not know or remember, I am International Ministries is a mission sending organization. Currently, we have about 125 global servants, missionaries, who serve around the world. Last year, we sent out over 900 volunteers, and we serve with 250 plus partners around the world in nearly every country. So, we are trying to meet the call that Jesus gave to us to uh, minister holistically, proclaiming the good news, meeting human needs, striving for justice, and actively being involved in transforming the world through the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe that God calls humanity into relationships of love and support and community. We care for the people with whom we work, both those who are served and those who offer their lives of service. We are committed to partnership and cooperation with a wide range of agencies to fulfill God's call in our mission. And as I said earlier, my area of work that I do is in Southeast Asia. But today, I would like to speak on some of those things that are affecting all of us globally, and I imagine you can guess what that is. And I imagine if I asked each of you how things are in your own lives, in your own communities, in your own work, and how things were different because of the pandemic, you could come up with several things and probably several statements. This morning already I have heard, I am so tired of it. <laughs> and we are seeing evidence of that this morning as we meet here in a different way with part of the fellowship here and part of the fellowship outside and perhaps part of the fellowship who will watch it on the internet. So no matter where we are, no matter what we are doing, no matter who we are, we are seeing things differently and having to experience things in a different way. And as we are living in this new paradigm, due to a virus which has changed our world and our way of doing things, I find that I am clinging to the words of Isaiah 43:19, And it says, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Wow, what wonderful words of encouragement for us in our families, our communities, our state, our country, and around the world. Let me read it again and let it sink into your hearts and minds. See, 
I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. My personal world is topsy-turvy right now. My work is in Southeast Asia, and I can attest that things have changed. My last trip to Asia was in November of 2019. I normally make seven trips a year to Southeast Asia, but since November, I have made no trips. My last trip was to visit Malaysia, and then I went to Thailand, and then I went to Vietnam. And I had three trips planned, March, April, and May, to Malaysia, Thailand, Japan, and Vietnam. But because of COVID, I was unable to travel. And from my home office in my basement, I find that sometimes I feel a bit frustrated because my life has changed so drastically. As my trips to partners and to our missionaries for encouragement and planning for our shared work have been cut. I am unable to visit my missionaries to see how they are doing and to hear about their challenges and joys face to face. I struggle with anxiety and fear over how things are changing in our world and how it might affect my family. And because I really have wanted this to just end, I want it over. I think probably most of you can appreciate that. I love, I liked how things were before to be honest with you. I could expect what was going to happen. I knew the things that were going on and that was comfortable for me. I liked being able to travel. I liked being able to leave my house without a mask, without hand sanitizer, and without disinfectant wipes. I liked being able to go on vacation and not worry about things. And even driving here, I could see the things that I have liked to do, and yet some of those things are closed. I liked being able to plan God's work for, for the kingdom in my area. Important things, such as anti-human trafficking, theological education, medical care, and one dear to my heart, education, education for refugees. I liked being able to attend, person church, attend church in person. But in the midst of this, the words of our Lord saying, See, I am doing a new thing. Keep ringing in my heart and in my mind. I am becoming aware and beginning to see how God is doing new things in our world. As we are in the midst of all of these things that are challenges that seem insurmountable to us, I am seeing and I trust how God is doing new things to further his kingdom, and how he is using his people to minister to others. I'd like to read the longer passage from where this Bible verse comes from. This is what the Lord says, He who has made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And in the Bible verses here, the, verse, the verses on the prophet's description of the character of God are the focus. And they refer to the past, while the words make us also look into the future. Verses 19 to 21 of that passage in Isaiah are written as direct discourse, spoken as a first-person speaker. The word interrupts the prophet's description of God's deeds. Do not remember is a divine command. Look around, or you will miss the future being born. So often we folks cling to that old saying or the old idea of the evil you know is better than the evil you don't know. Perhaps you've heard that before. But Isaiah 43 helps us to see our experience of God's grace in the past as a, spring for, a springboard so that we view neither present nor future with fear, but with expectation. 
I think these are important words for us now, in this age, with change happening everywhere, all the time. Our God has not changed. His character has not changed. The same God who has given us his grace and power will do the same thing, and even more, as we look into the future. I love this description about the verses. The prophet aims to create an imaginative space in the minds of the people so that their conception of the past can transform their understanding of the present and thus the future. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In a seemingly hopeless situation, the prophet calls on the people not to lose heart, but to look with anticipation for the signs of God's approaching redemption for the new thing. But you know, perhaps I am like many of us. We don't like new things always. New things are hard. We like the old. We like that which is comfortable. So what is God doing in this uncertain future in which we live? And since this is 2020, and we all know about 2020 vision, which I do not have anymore, I would like to share with you a few things that God is doing that I am able to see from my vantage point in the work that I do with international ministries. So I see that God is doing many things, and I would like to encourage you with these. I see that God is, um, God is doing care for others, and he is using his people to do so. I see things happening in the world, and I see how needs are being met in new and different ways. So first, I'd like to share that I see God using his people around the world to meet the others. Perhaps you have heard of the cruise ship, the Diamond Princess. Have you heard of that cruise ship? That was where we first kind of started hearing about coronavirus, because on this cruise ship, many of the people uh, contracted the coronavirus, and the ship was in the port of Yokohama for a long time, and then many of the people then finally were able to return. Many of them were Americans, able to turn back to the U.S. But I heard a story recently I wanted to share with you that really captured for me the way that God's people around the world are caring for each other. A couple of I, I heard of in Colorado planned a dream vacation, unaware of what it would turn into seem like an endless nightmare. They booked a cruise through Princess Cruise Lines, flying from Colorado to Singapore, where they boarded the ship on January 4th. They enjoyed several ports of call, a tour of Asian countries, and other interesting places before it became apparent that many of their group had contracted the Corona-19 or the COVID-19 virus. Dan, the, the gentleman in the couple, became very sick, and he and his wife were both tested. Her name is Carol, even though Carol had no symptoms. Everyone on the ship was quarantined in their cabins. Food was brought to their doors as no one was allowed in the halls but employees who enforced the lockdown. When the ship docked in Yokohama, Japan, Dan and Carol were taken by ambulance to the National Center for Global Health in Tokyo. Carol was there in 14 days, remained um, negative, and then was able to go to a hotel. Dan was having so much difficulty breathing that he was taken to ICU, placed on a ventilator, and connected to a heart-lung machine. His wife was not even able to see him until she pleaded with the hospital authorities. She was wrapped in a hazmat suit, mask, and glove with a covering over her hair and was taken through six locked doors <laughs> from the back of the hospital. Her husband was heavily sedated in a mass of tubes and life support equipment, unaware she was there. The doctor told her he might only have 48 hours to live. Back in the church, their, back in the U.S., their church started mobilizing and started uh, a prayer chain. And they did 24 hours a day prayer for him. He began to show some improvement. Meanwhile, a small Baptist church in Tokyo was located, and the pastor was contacted by email. Pastor Shin Kawano of the Okubo Baptist Church in Tokyo understood English, and he enlisted his congregation to also pray. Friends reached out to everyone they knew to enlarge the number of prayers, 
and Dan became to became um, uh, started improving. His improvement was slow and steady. His doctors were amazed and thrilled. And remember, Japan is a non-Christian country or a very low Christian uh, percentage. He was removed from life support, taken out of ICU, and placed in a ward with three other men who spoke English. Physical therapy began, and then he developed several blood clots, and therapy had to be, uh, had to be delayed. But he, became, he began to improve. And one of the neat things that Pastor Okubo did was um, that in order to help Dan and to help his mental health, um, they began to bring him food from outside the hospital. Japanese food in the hospital is fish, rice, and soup. He wasn't real crazy about that. So Pastor Okubo took Carol to the grocery store and helped her to find food that she knew that Dan would like. Back home, friends and family continued to pray, and it was a great day when Dan was strong enough to be released from the hospital after spending three months in the hospital in Japan. So we haven't heard that story. But what a great way that God is using his people to meet the needs around the world of those he loves. We hear the same stories in the U.S. A friend of mine went into surgery not too long ago, and his wife was unable to go with him. She had to wait outside. And she just prayed, God, I am so sad because I can't be with him. And then her husband texted, oh, guess what? One of the nurses here in the operating room, one of the ones who's taking care of us, my friend from elementary school, I remember her, and she's here with me. Oh, she felt so much better. Somebody that knew him and loved him was there with him. I see the way that you are meeting the needs in your community by having the food bank. Mm -hmm. Wow! I sat outside this morning um, before church started and saw several people come by. What a great ministry. So I see positive things happening. I also see positive things happening in ministry around the world. I am not sure when travel will resume, but I am learning new things about how to continue relationships which are not face-to-face, -face, and I'm sure many of you are doing the same. I am learning how to communicate through Zoom. I know Zoom really well now. Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp. I'm sure there are many, many more platforms. And I am spending more time <clears throat> with my precious family and meeting my neighbors as I am becoming thankful for the little things. I see new things that are happening, believe it or not, within the pandemic that God is doing as we have, in my area alone, six new missionaries. Three come that God is still working through the planning of mission trips, short-term mission to, to Thailand and a mission mentorship program um, through the Asian Alliance. God is sending short-term missionaries to virtually serve and assist in, over, uh, in ministry overseas. We are even doing short-term mission work online. When there is a need in another country, the missionary tells us, and we find somebody here who can help them online. We have several um, situations with that. I see theological education online, seminars and learning happening. And even recently, just this past July, um, as a start to our world mission offering, which helps all of our work at IM, IM held our world mission conference online for six nights over three weeks. Did any of you happen to see that? No. Okay. <laughs> there were over 1,000 people who signed up and who were able to watch it over Facebook Live. And usually when we do our World Mission Conference, people have to travel to Green Lake. This time they could sit at home and watch the missionaries and hear stories about what God is doing. Please remember the World Mission Offering here at Parksburg is September and October. This is the time when we take the offering for that. Um, thousands across the country celebrate and support the ministries that God is using to transform the world. Um, this is the world mission offering, and this church takes part in that, I believe. So please consider giving to that. So for the world mission offering this year, we are highlighting ministry priorities of discipleship, theological education, peace and justice, education, health and wellness, and economic development. And finally, I see that God is meeting the new needs of his people in creative and new ways. As people are struggling with the lockdown and so many things, 
God is giving them what he needs through new ways. I was able, in my position as an area director, to send out over $30,000 to our partners in need. Funds which came, again, from the um, one great hour of sharing. And we see God meeting these new needs as we have been able to meet the needs around the world. In Thailand, our I Am missionary, Andy Dieselberg, received a grant from us for feeding women who were unable to make a living through prostitution in Thailand. Annie said, the bars and entertainment venues in Bangkok have closed because of COVID. That means that there are thousands of women who are out of work and struggling to find food to eat. Women and men are coming to the streets in desperation to seek customers so they can eat and pay their rent. However, at the same time, the border, country border is closed, so there are few men coming in. So what they did was they put together bags of um, food, bags of hygiene packs, three days and two nights a week to give food to the hungry. And they found that at this time, it was a wonderful way to develop more and more relationships for these women and men who are involved in this trafficking. And they were able to make relationships which they hope will be able to allow them to share the good news of Jesus Christ that frees them from this bondage. In Cambodia, help um, bless Cambodia Network, we were able to help them start something new, a chicken project. And they find that as they are doing their ministry through camping and education, that sometimes their workers are unable to have enough money to live on. So they started a chicken project, which they will raise chickens and then sell them in order to be able to eat and also to have an income, a new thing. Our Asian Baptist Women's Union, similar to our American Baptist Women, is Women Helping Women. They started a new project, Women Helping Women. Women all through Asia were assisted with food and supplies to help them, single mothers and widows. The Asia Baptist Women's Union is trying to help the women and children infected and badly affected due to quarantines and lockdowns. Healthcare workers and volunteers require nutritious support to sustain their stamina. It is indeed overwhelming to see the needs met with limited resources. And just so you know that in Asia, many of the people who that we work with are day workers. So they're not guaranteed a salary, they're not guaranteed um, anything other than just the money they make during that day. And during the lockdown and during the quarantine, which is still going on in many areas, when people are unable to work, they are unable to have money. And many of them don't have bank accounts. So they are unable to supplement food. Once their day work is gone, they don't have savings account to draw on, then they go hungry. And so this money the Asia Baptist Women's Union had was able to help some of these women in these desperate situations in a new thing. In Malaysia, a refugee community living in Kuala Lumpur had their community surrounded by huge bales of barbed wire, probably about five feet tall. And that was done to keep them from leaving the community. And so as they were in that community, many of them were unable to go to work, many of them didn't have food, and even a school with many, many young children were stuck within that area of barbed wire. And the reason for doing this was so that everybody could be tested for COVID. But they were not given food, they were not given anything to live on, they were expected just to live for two weeks on what, I don't know. And so we were able, through our one great hour of sharing, to do a new thing to be able to help them with food. Our organization, International Ministries and other organizations, to help them with that food. And so at the end of two weeks, the barbed wire was taken away and they were able to live a semi-normal life. But that's just some ways that God is working to meet these new needs in new ways. In Myanmar, one great hour of sharing funds helped a refugee camp buy medicines for their people. In Morigo Camp in Japan, started by an American Baptist missionary many, many years ago, we are helping to keep this camp going because they are unable to open because of the restrictions they have in Japan um, um, due to COVID. 
And in Indonesia, we were able to assist the Indonesian Baptists, our partners, with funds for salaries for some of their pastors who are experiencing a lack of a salary because their day worker members are not able to work. So it has indeed been a dire situation in Asia where I look, work. And yet, I see God doing a new thing. God is at work. He is using his people to do things for his kingdom. I pray that in your own lives, here in the U.S., that you can also see that God is doing a new thing. And when we feel blue about the current situation, and when we are experiencing difficulties in this pandemic, we can take heart and reassurance that our God is sovereign. So how might these words, how are these words from Isaiah reaching you? As you look around you, what do you see? What new thing is God doing around you? Let me read the verse again. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Our world, our country, our community, me at times, I am waiting for things to go back to the way they were. But whether we like it or not, mask mandates, hand sanitizer, social distancing, back to school, church gathering, things, these changes are just some small indications of a bigger change we see in our country, in our world, in our lives. Things are different. They are not the same. And yet, we have this promise of a new thing. God is making a way. So we have a choice. We can either look at the past, unwilling to embrace with confidence and faith the future God has for us, or we can learn and be open to these new things and praise him for his provision and care. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these wonderful words from your word that tell us that you are doing a new thing. Father, I pray that we can look ahead with confidence to the future you have for us because we know that you are a part of that future. You are our God. You are sovereign you have things planned out for us. You have known since the beginning of the world, since the beginning of creation, that this would happen. This didn't catch you by surprise. And so I pray, God, that we as your children can embrace this newness and see the things that you are doing. In the midst of all the fear, anxiety, sadness, depression that we are ex experiencing, God, Help us to be able to lift our eyes to you and know that you love us so much and that you want to be a part of our lives and you want us to trust you for this new thing you are doing. Help us to see it. Help us to be a part of it. And it's in your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak, and I pray that you will go in peace. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.